today we are going to discuss about one chapter in the syllabus the syllabus is alternating current the short form of the alternating current is ac what is the meaning of ac current why it is called as ac current or what is the difference between the ac and dc currents these things we are going to discuss in this chapter so first of all what is ac current if you see the electric supply in our homes in offices and shopping malls where you can see the this arrangement of the electricity the voltage always varies like a sine function with respect to time the voltage supply varies as sine function with the time if any voltage applied is varying as sine function with respect to time that voltage is called alternating voltage according to the ohms law v is equal to ir that means v is proportional to i v and i both are directly proportional to each other the current which is caused by this alternating voltage is called alternating current what is the need to introduce this concept to the society initially before the invention of ac one current is there what is this dc direct current direct current previously in electrostatics and capacitors and uh, uh, remaining examples of ohms law all these things we have discussed about the direct current the graph of the direct current will be like this straight line direct no variations in the direction or no alternations in the direction but for ac the graph will be like this with respect to the time interval it is changing the direction that is nothing but the alteration or alternating current this is the graph of the ac what is the need to introduce this ac concept dc currents won't travel to the longer distances if you have a wire of lengthy wire so suppose this is the length of the wire and this is another wire which is having some length more let us say this length is l this length is 2l whenever this l length conducting wire connected to a battery and this 2l lengthy wire is also connected to a battery it is better to keep uh, one plug key here in those cases see the length resistance is directly proportional to length that means in this lengthy conductor the time taken to reach the charge carriers from one end to another end will take more time when means the charge carriers are the charged particles which are in this power supply nothing but the battery takes more time to travel while they are traveling to the longer distances they will lose the energy that's why whenever a lengthy wire is connected to a battery it is very difficult to get the same strength at the end but in case of alternating currents this one the current can travel to the longer distances longer distance travel there will be no change in the strength of the electric field with respect to the ac fields so these are the advantages of ac when compared to the dc what are the objects we can see the dc current flow battery is the best example for the dc power source ac power source frequency generator
So the alternating current what we are experiencing in our homes and offices and the different areas where we are watching in our daily life, this AC current always possesses with some frequency. Now in this lesson, up to now we have discussed about the advantages of AC with respect to the DC. AC can travel to the longer distances. And uh, this is the if this is the case, uh, the frequency is also generated within the AC current. Now, if this AC current is traveling through different electrical instruments or different electrical objects like resistor, capacitor, inductor, how this AC current will behave and what are the equations of the voltage and average power consumed by the electrical equipments. Now, we are going to discuss about these things with respect to the phase diagrams. Now, we will see an AC voltage is applied to a resistor. What is the voltage through the resistor, current through the resistor? maximum current, maximum voltage and the RMS values of the currents and voltages. These all things we are going to observe now. For this purpose, let me check a circuit diagram for this. This is a resistor. And this resistor is connected to an AC source. with some EMF. So the resistor AC source. This AC source of fre variable frequency, this is the symbol of the variable frequency, is connected to a resistor. So AC current supplied to a resistor now in the beginning of the this chapter i have given some point the point is alternating voltage that means whenever an alternating source is connected to any resistor or any capacitor or any inductor the voltage produced is called alternating voltage alternating voltage is a function of sign with variable frequency with respect to time therefore ohm's law what is ohm's law v is equal to ir but in case of AC voltages, this equation changes like this. Vm sin omega t is equal to IR. Therefore, I am keeping I here and I am bringing R to the left hand side of the equation. Therefore, Vm by R into sin omega t is equal to i so we can write v by r is equal to i and vm by r is equal to im this is one equation we got and this is one equation let us say this is equation one this is equation two when compared to these equations one and two voltage and current when an AC voltage is supplied to a resistor voltage and current both are in the same phase because they both are associated with the sign terms if it is if anyone is in the cost terms then they both are out of phase maybe lagging or maybe overcoming these things we will discuss in the remaining objects when it is connected to the AC source but for the for now equation 1 and 2 refers the voltage 2 refers the current where Vm and Im are called as maximum voltage and maximum current. Maximum or peak voltage. Im also maximum or peak current. They both are in same phase because they both associate with the sign function. From 1 and 2, from equations 1 and 2, what we can say? Voltage and current 
are in phase. Maybe the amplitude difference will be there. Maximum current difference and uh, the amplitude of the maximum voltage when you draw with respect to the VI graph, the diagram is called phasor diagram. The graph will be like this. Maybe this is I am. This is amplitudes may be different, but this I and V both are in the same phase. This is the way to represent the phase diagram, phase relation between the two physical quantities which can exist in the alternating. Current. These type of diagrams are called phasor diagrams. Phasor diagram means which shows the phase relation between two physical quantities that are associated with the alternating current. Now we got one equation Vm is equal to Im by R. This is Ohm's law in AC current. In AC. So Ohm's law is valid for DC currents as well as AC currents. Now we will check whenever an alternating voltage is passing through the resistor, not only the voltage drop, not only the current, there is a possibility for the power consumption by the resistor. So what is the instantaneous power? It's power dissipated. through resistor is equal to P is equal to what is the formula of the power I square R because you are relating the I and R. We know that I is equal to I m sin omega t and I am substituting this I value in this equation. Let us write this equation number 3. So therefore, P is equal to I m square sin square omega t r. But in case of AC voltages, this is half cycle, this is full cycle. What is the power consumption did or what is the power dissipated in the uh, whole cycle or the average power consumed in for a total cycle how much it is we are going to find out that is nothing but the average power consumed in a complete cycle so whenever it is like this we can say it as 0 this is pi this is 2 pi and this axis is omega t you can say like that maybe the amplitudes may be different but the variation is common with respect to the pi 2 pi 3 pi like that and here we can write it is 3 pi now i am watching the amp now i am going to find out what is the average power consumed in the complete cycle the average power power consumed or dissipated Average power consumed or dissipated in a complete cycle is equal to this is the symbol. Any physical quantity kept in between these two type of brackets that is nothing but the average value of that physical quantity means we are going to find out the average value. So therefore is equal to Average value of P is equal to 
एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ आई एम स्क्वेयर साइन स्क्वेयर ओमेगा टी आर और वी कैन राइट आई एम स्क्वेयर आर साइन स्क्वेयर ओमेगा टी आई एम राइटिंग आई एम स्क्वेयर आर आउटसाइड एंड आई एम फाइंडिंग द एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ साइन स्क्वेयर ओमेगा टी इज इक्वल टू एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ पी सो देर फोर अगेन एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ पी इज इक्वल टू आई एम स्क्वेयर आर इन टू वॉट इज साइन स्क्वेयर ओमेगा टी वन माइन एस कास ओमेगा टी बाई टू नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू फाइंड आउट द एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ दिस कास देन वॉट विल बी द आंसर इट विल बी लाइक दिस एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ पी इज इक्वल टू आई एम स्क्वेयर सॉरी This is I m square r into half into average value of one minus cos two omega t. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.